you got to hear. Jimmy Kimmel did a great thing on his show the other night. Here's, this, this has got me so irritated. Tell me if I have a right to be irritated. Hey, by the way, boys, my computer isn't working over here. Or it's not turned on or something. But anyway, this is going to make you mental, Robin. What happened? And just listen to this. Jimmy uh, pointed out something really, really wild. Really? Anybody see uh, Inside the NFL? It's an HBO show. Um, on, and, and Inside the NFL, they're, they're trying desperately to be funny lately. So what they've done is they've stolen that game that Howard Stern plays, the one where they ask somebody really dumb, uh, uh, easy questions. Right. And then they're stupid, and they guess whether the person gets it right or not. It's pretty funny, but the guy they quizzed was Zach Thomas of the Miami Dolphins. He's a player, and uh, watch how this went. What do the letters D.C. stand for in Washington, D.C.? Does he get it? Mm, no. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah we know. not get this one. We Come know. on, he's got You know? This. He's got this. Yes. Yeah, well, let's see what he says. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's happen to him right now. <laughs> you can use his answer, but nobody else's. <laughs> All right, go ahead. The letters in Washington, D.C. stand for District County. Great, huh? Wow. Man. What I really, a rip. I really want to call someone from inside NFL and just say, like, like, <laughs> like how do you guys do that? And you know it's mine. and you know With it's a straight some, face. And the exact questions, even. You don't even bother writing new questions. Yeah, you take them right yeah. off the show. And, like, how do you feel after? Like, do you, do you congratulate yourself on a great show? Like, that was a really funny bit? Or, like, do you know you're ripping me off? Or do you just put it out of your mind while you're doing it? I mean... I mean, what, 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 what's the process you go through when you steal like that? Yeah, I mean, how do you live with yourself? Yeah. I mean, that Recently, I had a lawsuit over a TV show that was, you know, stolen from me, and, and I wanted to say to my good friend, you know, how do you, like, like, what, like what's the, let's say the show was a huge hit, like, what process do you go through to lay down at night and go, oh, okay, this is okay? Or to accept accolades about it, or, you know, yeah. if it was a huge hit and people were congratulating you, how do you... Take that. Yeah, do you, do you go thank you and just move on with your life? Or do you say, no, well, thanks to Howard Stern, we figured that out. It's really weird. I get really torn up inside. When that's that's yeah. so direct. I mean, because they're doing everything. They're doing the, can he get it right? Could he be? Yeah, yeah. And the exact question. Yeah. That's a direct hit. I got, Gary, you got to get somebody from inside the NFL to come on the show. Get me somebody, even if it's a janitor. I mean, do they give you any credit at all? No. Do they ever say, you know, we're going to play the Howard Stern game? There was No, they don't even call it the Howard Stern game. I mean, I should license that. But uh, it was weird. It's weird because years ago we had a guy on the radio who uh, he called his producer. He did a radio show like in Indiana somewhere, and he called his producer Baba Booey. Yeah. And I said to him, like, how do you do such a blatant ripoff? And he goes, Baba oh, come Booey. on, Howard. Baba Everyone Booey. knows that uh, the Baba generic Bowie. name for a producer in radio is Baba Booey. Baba Booey. And Baba I went, Bowie. you're kidding. Good. That's your. Baba that's Bowie. the way your mind works? Yeah. You know that's not true. Generic Baba name. <laughs> Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Way to Baba Booey now Baba means Bowie. producer. Baba Bowie. Yeah. So, hey, where's my Baba Booey? Baba Bowie. Way to commit to your scumbagness, sir. But inside the NFL takes the... Well, thanks to Jimmy for pointing it out. I would never know. Cause yeah, I, never... I don't watch Baba the Bowie. inside the NFL. And I get email and stuff, like a bunch of people wrote me, the inside of the NFL is ripping you off, and I, and I just say, you know what, I choose to ignore it because it'll just get me crazy if it's true. And uh, But this uh, tape was handed to me of Jimmy's show last night, and uh, thanks to Jimmy for pointing it out. Yeah. I haven't watched Inside the NFL in years. I used to love it, but now... I know, it used to be a great show. Well, there's this crazy thing going on now where they're desperately trying to inject comedy into sports. Right. Like, yeah. There's comedians on. You don't, you don't, you can't get the score of a game anymore. you got to see jokes. which one is the NF, Inside the NFL? Which station is that? On? HBO. HBO. That's yeah. the HBO one, because, yeah, they've got Wanda Sykes, and, yeah. you know, they hire comedians now, not sports people. Right. So now they go, well, let's listen to the Howard Stern show and take some of his stuff. Yeah, let's use, Howard gets the male audience, let's use his stuff. Ay, ay, ay. See, that would be their argument. They'll probably go, look, we're not a comedy show. So. But what kills me is there's been a million times where I've come close to doing business with HBO through my production company and stuff. Right. And, um, you know, they, they supposedly pay for ideas. Not much, but they pay for ideas. This is just blatant. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, I mean, it's, gross. it's just upsetting. I don't know. It's just, who cares? The, I mean, I, I can't fight City Hall. I mean, I see so much of the... 
I had a huge argument with Tom, our general manager, yesterday. I went yeah. to his office. I made a bit of an ass of myself. I was just screaming and yelling at him over the censorship and what's going oh, yeah. on. And uh, I just really took out a lot of frustration on him. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I actually care about the show and care about what I do. And, um, you know, and then I tune I, I said to Tom, I tune in network television and they've got two 16-year-olds under the sheets, getting it on, and they're topless. They're 16 years old. And Tom's I, sitting on you. And, and he goes, well, that must be on at 10 o'clock at night, the show skin. I go, I don't know when it's on. I know it's on network television. And it's all right, Safe Harbor. And, and it's just all such it BS. It can't be on at 10 o'clock at night. It's a Fox show. Yeah. Yeah, they start the news at 10, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, it's on earlier than 10. But, you know, he just he just always throws out, like, it must be, it must be. And I, yeah, it's hard to fight. No. Yeah. It's hard to <laughs> fight. already done a show. Oh, I'm so woozy by the time I go in there and I'm yelling and screaming. You know. And it's the same dumb stuff we talk about all the time. I'll go back to the sales department and, you know, how many times I got to ask you to help me out? It's, he's like a blank slate every time you talk to him. Yeah. You got to reteach him. Yeah. It's all new. Gra- like he never heard it before. No. And I get so frustrated. I'm just throwing out a million things at once. I'm, I'm not. I'm barely coherent. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear that. Yeah. No. <laughs> but it's just weird uh, to hear people just taking your stuff and well, I, you using know, it. Quite frankly, ev- it, you know, I don't think about it a lot, but every idea that Tom has said, no, you can't do that, has become a TV show. Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Don't. Don't stun you gun the guy's ball. Don't a guy in the studio. <laughs> yeah, they just put it on jackass <laughs> yeah. and made a fortune. And that was actually Johnny who wanted to come in here and do right. it. <laughs> Oh, my God. I don't know. But by the time I get done talking to Tom, I sound like Shaq trying to get out the English language. Because I, I just, I know, I'm, I know. I said, Tom, it's like talking to a wall in here. He robs you of your energy. Yeah. I said, there's something in this room. You're like Superman. You can, it's, he's the kryptonite. Yeah. You're my kryptonite. <laughs> hey, so, um, anyhow, what happened with the Yankees? Oh, um, boy. Well. Uh, it's gotten so bad, Howard, where some of these high-paid guys aren't hitting that they actually benched them last night. They benched Jason Giambi. He makes $17 million a year. and he di- And he didn't start Game 5 of the World Series. And people were saying, oh, he couldn't possibly bench Giambi, but he did. Well, he came in and pinch hit at the end and hit a home run. Right, because yeah, he motivated well, now him. he knows he's, he's got to keep his job. David Wells was pitching for his job last night and failed. Yeah. Well, I heard he, Wells had a bad day. He's hurt, though. I mean, he got, he's But I told him what to do. That fake back plot I told him to go to Sarno. Why doesn't he do it? He should have. I, I had a private conversation with him and everything. Called him. Something well, was hurting him. He'd rather take his exercises and talk to the doctor. Right. And Molly coddle himself and, and lose a game. Well, you know what? Look, man, we got we to win two at Yankee Stadium. It's very easily done. I will be there tomorrow. Those are the Marlins you're playing with. With my dipping dots, and I will be ready. And Rivera's fresh. The Yankees yeah, can easily win two in a row. Artie, this saying. is the World Series. David Wells, take himself out of the game. Give me a break. John, did you see how he threw that ball at first base? He was Something was killing him. What so, are you gonna... he, he, he pitched a scoreless inning. Yeah, but you no. keep going. It was over as soon as Wells took himself out of the game. Oh, no, that's not true. <laughs> because he's the starter, yeah. and they depend on him to. Yeah, because all the Yankees have are starters and Mariano Rivera. Right, Their somebody's middle getting relief is horrible. So as soon as he was out of the game, I knew we were going to lose. And and this is a World Series. You don't take yourself. You you, you keep pitching. John, you don't think Wells is a competitor? He might. He had to be hurting pretty bad if to take himself out of a World Series game. I mean, I don't the, think already he, hasn't there been uh, players in the past who. Play with incredible with amounts terrible of terrible injuries. I mean, come on, this is the, you know, the, the, give me a World break. Series, John's yeah. point. Yeah, you got one game to pitch. Yeah. It's not like you got to come back tomorrow. And he's pitching well. I mean, he, he pitched a scoreless inning, Howard. John, John, right? He's talking it. like someone who's. I mean, <laughs> if the guy's in pain, he can't throw the ball. What's he gonna? He barely threw the ball to first base on that last out. He didn't throw it. He didn't throw it. 
I think he, I think he stood there and watched the other guy throw it because <laughs> when he walked back to the mound, he was panting like he just ran a marathon. Yeah, but he really doesn't have to be in that pain. It was a ground ball back to the pitcher, and he like stood there and just tossed it, almost like a chick. You don't think it's like a you know a mental thing? This of is like course the, it is. of course it is. It might be, but it, it something's wrong. He has real pain though. Yeah. But yeah, he thinks it's real anyway. In the press conference before the game, he was saying how he doesn't need to work out. He's, that was yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, he was fine. He doesn't do any exercise. And look at him. He's, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's doing great. So, so this pain must have happened between, like, yeah. it must have happened within an hour. You know what I mean? Well, right. And it was the game of his life yeah. because he wants to pitch for the Yankees again. Mm -hmm. And Steinbrenner was auditioning him, basically, mm -hmm. based on his performance last night. It, the, the Fox's coverage is so funny because they cut to Steinbrenner after the Yankees screw up. And he's sitting there like the godfather. Oh, <laughs> eating, they look at him eating ice cream with a mad look on his face. And he's talking to some underling next to him like he's ordering a hit or something. How bad would you love to be the owner of the Yankees? Oh, oh boy. be great. That's your dream job, right? Yeah. What's your dream job? Owner of the Yankees? Well, shortstop for the Yankees. You'd rather play for the Yankees than own them? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, I get that. I hear you. I openly say that I'd rather be Derek Jeter than Artie Lang. Yeah, I guess if I had a choice of owning the radio station or being me on the radio station, I'd rather be me. Nah, you want to be you. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, that's, I, that's cooler. I was, yeah. with, <laughs> I, I was eating with Artie yesterday. We were talking about the Yankees. He goes, John, you don't understand. The Yankees are all I got. <laughs> <laughs> All he's got. What is he talking about? What's my, up with that? My, my he goes, I'm a loser. My, All I have are the Yankees. Wow. My entire life. Wait, wait a second. Let's drop that whole loser persona. I, I don't get that either. Yeah, I mean, you got a great girlfriend. You got a house in Jersey. You yeah, got money in the bank. Still be a loser. Yeah. I'm what? just saying. I, I still think like when I was 20 years old. I still have that attitude in my head. Of like, All right. So how is it that all you have is the Yankees? Well, <laughs> They're the love of your life. <laughs> or are they the winners in your life? They're a team I get affected when the Yankees lose. Artie Lang is radio. <laughs> a mentally retarded boy from New Jersey. I didn't whose only that. dream is to be a Yankee. I don't literally mean that they all, they're all i have. I mean, there's... Well, why'd you say it? Because, you know, you're talking at lunch. <laughs> all he had was the Yankees. <laughs> You know, Ed gonna, Harris is George Steinbrenner. I mean, me and John have said everything there is to say to each other <laughs> while I'm buying him lunch. Artie is radio. Uh, I'm going to have another sandwich. Don't, t t tell me more about your dream. <laughs> Artie, while you buy me a cheeseburger, can I hear more about the Yankees? Yeah, he's such a loser, he's buying John lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Artie, could you pay for my... Stop deflecting. It was pretty funny. At this, point, at this point, you think I'm like radio or retarded guy? Yes, you me. must be. Artie Lang. <laughs> Why doesn't Joe Torre hire me to be the retarded mascot? By the way, around with a the worst look on your reviews face. for this movie, Radio, where Cuba Gooding Jr. plays a mental retardate who is embraced by the community. Yes. Um, everyone's saying that, you know, I'm reading all the reviews, how it avoids the discussion of race. It avoids everything that could have possibly been touched on this movie. It's just one of those feel-good movies that's right. horribly We're going to pretend sappy. that the world is perfect. Yeah. And, you know, there's no angst or anything. So, um, but they say that um, Cuba Gooding Jr., in order to play a retarded person, puts in these big fake teeth. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm I'm looking at this thing, and I go, you think it's that simple? Like, first of all, why is it that, it brings up a good question. Why is it that all retarded people have bad teeth? Why is no <laughs> why one fixing their teeth? Why won't they get their teeth, their teeth fixed? Yeah. yeah, I mean, sure, why aren't their parents or the state or whoever's taking care of them? Can a retarded person not handle braces? Yeah, and Cuba Gooding Jr. could have good teeth. I think that's a crutch to rely on to... That's the way you know he's retarded. You yeah. don't have to act. Yeah, because nobody would walk around with teeth like that unless he's Baba Booey. Even Baba Booey's teeth aren't that big. Baba Booey tried to fix his teeth. Yeah, at least he tried. <laughs> <laughs> Even Gary the Retard just got two fake teeth. Yeah. I just, th I just think it makes it easier to play a retard if you have bad teeth. We used to say that as kids, too, that retarded guys, kids, would, would dress a certain way. Like with those sort of blue or green socks and white, real white sneakers. And you're like... Do you think there's a, a store for retarded kids yeah. that all sell the same merch? Well, isn't there someone who could dress them a little hip? I mean... <laughs> hey, you're retarded. I'm retarded. Let's dress alike. <laughs> uh, the other movie that came out is uh, the one that uh, Pam Anderson and... Um, uh, Jenny. Jenny, m m whatever her name is. McCarthy. McCarthy. I can't think of her name. What's wrong with you today? I couldn't think of her name. <laughs> Jenny, feel my cans. What, I got to know everyone's name? <laughs> I thought you were in love uh, with her. Wasn't I feeling her up yesterday? Yes. <laughs>
Yeah, that I was gotta good. tell you that that was the more I thought about that. But I keep thinking about the softness of her breast. Yeah, that was like a ten minute grope. The smell of her neck, the, <laughs> the soft, subtle kisses. The yeah, what? Oh, that's right. We never got to that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, is her husband cute? He's quirky looking. Yeah, you know, you like he that. could have something going on. Yeah. <laughs> And my girlfriend said he's cute. Yeah. But I didn't know if she said that because I said Jenny was cute. Well, he's not cute, cute, like a re like a straight cute. Yeah. He gets cute because of the quirkiness. Yeah, and, and the money. Like, yeah, you right. look at that and you go, ooh. <laughs> you should have let her husband feel your breast. Right, there you go. <laughs> See how How's that goes. that equal? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah. It's funny how I could be feeling up a woman one day and then forget her name the next. Yeah, look at you. It's a safety valve my brain plays. <laughs> what, I want to be obsessed with her? Running around Jenny McCarthy. Just forget her. Person, she's very sexy. I see her on TV and she's not. You know, I agree with you. She's one of these chicks. The same thing happened with Uma Thurman when she came in here. Yeah. For me, like, she got... She they don't translate on camera? I guess not, because in person, that was the sexiest I've ever seen Jenny McCarthy. Like, Wow. I really thought Uma Thurman was going to want me. Yeah. She went right back to her husband after uh, she met me. <laughs> What's her problem? You chased her back to yeah. Ethan Hawke. I, couldn't, I was expecting like some sort of weird email or phone call saying, listen, I, I, I got to have you. <laughs> but that's the size of my ego. And uh, Robin read in the paper yesterday, went right back to Ethan Hawke, left this studio and, and went back to her cheating husband. You know, she was so out of there when she came in. Yeah, she said, let me see what my options are. <laughs> A cheating husband... Or that guy, Howard Stern, <laughs> who looks like a pelican. Uh, I'll go back to my husband. You know, I maybe, saw you with Uma Thurman. Maybe a cheating Ethan is not so bad. You know, so he cheats. <laughs> There's every right, though. <laughs> so, um... I don't know if that was actually the process. Anyway, the movie, the movie, which is called Scary Movie 3. <laughs> there you go. Now, did that have anything to do with the Marlins? No. Or the Wayans, whatever they're called. No, the Marlins or the Yankees are playing them. <laughs> Marlin and... But no, no, had nothing to do with the Wayans. Uh, the Wayans brothers did the first two. Right. This was done by the same guys who did Airplane I and see. all that. Okay. And uh, one newspaper says it's really funny, gave it three stars, and then the other paper gave it one star and said it's just not funny. Mm. So you don't know. I'd go see it. In movies like that, sometimes the yeah. critics are off. Yeah. At least they could have two or three good laughs in it. Teenagers love it. Like, my daughter's going tonight. Right. They they got to be there the first night. Huh? Yeah. She loves Scary Movie 3. Or 2 or 1. Doesn't make a difference. She loves them all. Loves it. Did you watch uh, that thing that the movie company sent you, like 20 minutes of the movie? Yeah. I thought that was a riot. Uh, I get a little bored after a while with all the parody. It's yeah. like... Uh, it, this story, I still need a story to move it along. Yeah, there's no story. They just parody, parody, parody. Well, one parody. guy says there is a story. I mean, who knows? You know, I, I haven't seen it. But I'm not I'm not the kind of guy that rushes out to see these parody movies. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, you know? I I thought it was funny. Yeah, it was funny. The, the scene with Pam Anderson. I liked and, one, and I thought I sort of liked two. Yeah, so I'll go I'll see, see it. it. I'll see it. Just not going out tonight. Oh. What's all? You're not going to go see radio. <laughs> Does he? Um, you know, Gary. Movies are all I've got. <laughs> Howard Stern's radio. <laughs> what they asked me to play radio, something like that. That would be great. You, you know, well, it was a black kid, right? Yeah, but so what? Oh, you could do what? what? A white guy you can know, play a black. It was. It was. It was. I remember reading it originally. It was like a, a six-page story in Sports Illustrated. Yeah. And they turned it into a movie. It wouldn't be too right. insulting if Howard played that in blackface. Would you? <laughs> I don't think so. Fake teeth. <laughs> Howard Stern is radio. Uh, Hello. Hey, Jason, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. Uh, hey. You had Rena Sofer on yesterday. I used to work uh, with her husband, and her husband is uh, the biggest homo that you'll ever find. Well, what do you mean? Wait what a you second. Saying? What are you saying? He's not a homo. I mean, maybe he's not a guy. He's a guy. A guy but... you like. Yeah, don't call him a homo. You know what? Go away. Go away. Stupid ass. <laughs> what are you trying to do to us? Yeah. Unless a guy gives you oral. A lot of guys call another guy a homo when they're jealous of their, you know, it doesn't mean they're homosexual, but, right. you know, this guy's just, this guy's out of line using foul language. So I cut him off. 
I wonder if it's true. <laughs> uh, he doesn't mean he's a homo. <laughs> I don't know. He went back to. Uh, it doesn't mean he's a homo. So he meant he was um, like a, he's jealous of his wife. That's all. That's the end of that. All right. Whatever. Your homo right. doesn't mean gay. Yeah. But he said both. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, that's an indictment. <laughs> All right. Andy, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. I saw, I saw the uh, Rena Sofer show last night. It was good. Yeah. Was I think good? it was better. I went to bed. I watched uh, Friends, and then I fell asleep. I just can't stay up late anymore. I mean, I can't. I couldn't watch the World Series. I uh, I didn't bother to start with the World Series because no. I knew I somehow knew David Wells was not going to have a good performance. I didn't want to see that. I didn't get to watch Survivor. I'm not watching that anymore. I am. But, man, I was just so tired. I fell asleep. Well, you hadn't slept the night before, remember? You yeah. woke up early. Yeah, that was it. I was gone. I, I thought the show was good. She, I mean, the whole show was about sex and her having sex, and it was it was funny. It was a good show. I don't think she liked me. Why I think she, I don't know. She ran right out of here after the interview. I think she was. I think she didn't want to impose herself. Oh, you do? Yeah. I, I saw it a different way, but I don't mean like me, like you know, like no, me. No, no, I mean, no. I thought she was she was thanking you profusely for having she? her in. Yeah. Yeah, but she ran like right out. But she didn't want to. You know, she was like, "Geez, they didn't even want me here." She probably was feeling weird. Oh, really? Yeah, I just was like, "I'm not going to be a bother." Goodbye. I was trying to connect with her. <laughs> that was a great interview. I thought she was a very uh, interesting person. Yeah. But, uh, Did you hear about how Benji tried to pick her up outside? What? No, what was that? Well, she was running out with her two publicists in tow, you know, like like uh, sort of like this hot actress with somewhere else to go. And Benji's sitting by the corner there by where Ronnie sits. Yeah. And he goes, uh, as she's running by, he goes, are you from Pittsburgh? And she goes, yeah. And he goes, uh, why? She goes, why? And he goes, uh, I used to read about you in the Pittsburgh Jewish papers. Oh, gee. <laughs> and then she went, oh, thanks, bye. How charming. Did you did you remind her that he's wow. the best looking guy in the show? Yeah, we were trying. He's, he's not a picture from 20 years but ago. She, she ran I out. used to look like this. I look like this 20 years ago back in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I thought it was a nice What were you time. up to, Benji? No, I used to uh, read about her in the Jewish Chronicle all the time. Benj, do me a favor. Yeah. Leave the guests alone. Well, yeah. she was right. It was. <laughs> I know, I know. But just go about your business. I, hey, Howard, I, I. You get very weird. No, I don't. I read about you in the Jewish paper. <laughs> but who cares? You know what? You're right. Who cares? You know what? I saw her in a magazine. Which one? Us. It was the Jewish magazine. You should have told her. Jewish like magazine. Jew us. <laughs> Jew us. Jew us. <laughs> What's up? I, Benji, I love you to death, but it, it, if somebody walks by down the hallway and they don't know who you are or what you do on the show, you're absolutely the creepy guy in the hall. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I keep trying to explain I mean, you that. St you stand out. You're, uh, sort of, you're the creepy you guy in the hall. It's just, it's and just, then you say something stupid yeah. like that. <laughs> I feel bad. It wasn't creepy. It was more funny. No, it is creepy because you're not her. <laughs> right. You know. I guess so. Of course it's creepy. To you, it's funny. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I got to read you the email. I got a whole bunch to do today. It's uh, hey, hey, Gary, where's your college student who's following you around? He's late. He's late. Oh, he's come late. On, man. Wow. We're here. Yep. Like it was what freezing. What school does he go to? I don't know. Hofstra. Hofstra. <laughs> it was freezing yesterday, and Benji was in shorts. You know, it's like, yeah. It's disturbing. And like, who needs him talking to the guests? I mean, unless he really has something important to say. Well, Why stop the woman for that? That's what I mean. Yeah, like I went to high school with you in Pittsburgh, might have merited a stop, but I read about you in the Jewish Times as yeah. no stop at all. Or if you're going to make a comment to a guest off off the air, right? just clear it with Gary ahead of time. Oh all my right. goodness, poor you know, Gary. But go to Gary and say, I'm thinking of saying to Rena, I read about you in the Pittsburgh Jewish newspaper right. years ago. And then Gary will say to you, you know what, Benji? It's kind of not necessary. And then you'll come back here and you'll do your thing. I Compared to everyone here, I, I'm, I'm the Dude. quietest person in the Dude. world. Dude, it's very creepy when you walk up to a person individually. I, she was, she practically ran into me. Yeah, I was she was totally me. Benji's type, a Jewish chick, exactly. who's extremely good looking. She's a married woman. I she, know she's married. She's not looking she at you. Seven year old kid. I yeah, know. she's not looking for you. Trust yeah. me, she's not looking for me. She's not looking for Fred. She might be looking for Artie, but she's not looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but how's right? Key prospect. How's right? Like you're in the hallway, you're in shorts, you're sweating profusely from your forehead, <laughs> and it's just a whole odd. Think, okay, sorry. It's just it's just uncomfortable for everyone. It's uncomfortable when Benji speaks to me. Right. I, I'm hey, so I totally uncomfortable. Him, and it's uncomfortable. It's Benji's birthday today. Is it, it is? Yeah. 
Oh, happy Any birthday. chance of finding out your real age? I read about that in the Jewish Times. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Benji doesn't give out his real age? We, we, we're, we're really unsure how old he is. That doesn't matter. He's Who like cares? Duque. <laughs> Duque. <laughs> well, the, well, the, Benji was born on a foreign country. But the, Soil. He's Dominican. But you know what the El thing Benji. is? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that Benji started interning for us. And I think he was a little bit older, older, but he wanted to get a job and, you know, get into business. So he didn't want to be seen as the old intern, so I think he shaved some years off. All right, fine, but now, what's the difference? Yeah. So how old are you? Oh, well, today's not my birthday, but... Oh, it's not? No, you see, you say, she said happy birthday to me a month ago also. <laughs> I know, I don't know. It's, oh, what is John it? just put up on the on my computer, it's Benji's birthday. When is your birthday, Benji? I, I actually, actually, it's, uh, it's, it's coming up, but... Okay. Uh, I, 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 that's what I mean. In Benji land. Yeah, he can't be normal. He'll never be accepted. Is it, it, a week away, a month away. <laughs> it's it's away. already passed. <laughs> I, I, I Wait, wished him a happy birthday a month ago. But how is already passed coming up? <laughs> it's coming up. It, it'll take a while, but it's coming up. <laughs> oh, you mean a year from now? <laughs> in that case. I don't. Know. Everybody said it was his birthday today for me, so I don't know. But 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 whenever you ask him how old he is, he goes, "Uh, uh as far as I know." I'm, thir you know, you know, 35 or whatever. And I go, well, what does that mean? He goes, well, I don't really know, you know, because you know, someone could screw with the birth certificate. I'm like, I'm not sure if it was me. Uh, all right, all right. Always, there's a whole long stick to okay. it. Okay, yeah, and, it, and it's a real, and it's boring. Hey, I'm not trying to make anything up, John. So, so explain that to Howard. What, what, as far as you know, if I go into it, you guys will say I'm, I'm BSing. All right, I'm afraid of identity theft. <laughs> just, just, uh, just entertain him for a sec because he, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. I don't want to hear it. Oh. I don't even care. I so don't care. It's so boring, his whole persona. <laughs> there might be a real guy in there that's a, a nice guy, interesting guy. Might be interesting. But he's got this concept that he's going to be, I don't know, like oh, you say, Andy know. Kaufman. You think everything's like a conspiracy? I'm not a conspiracy. I know you're trying really hard to be somebody you're not. not no, I'm not, Howard. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not used so to why, So why wouldn't you give out your birthday? Who cares? Why, but, why, why, why do you have to be screaming, make me special every minute? You know... Everything's not about. I'm not focusing on this. You are. So, so it, it, I'm not, I don't even care. I just wish you a happy well, birthday, and then it comes out that you're lying to everyone about your age, and hey, that's your your prerogative. But I don't care why. I, I've I've had many run-ins with you in your in your wacky like life. Run you can't even answer the direct question. When's your birthday? It's the most direct question. It's a I mean, who are question. you? What do you mean? Who am I? Uh -huh. I mean, who are you that you can't answer your birthday? I'm done with it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I want mean, I, I want out of the loop all the time. I want to get out of this. I can't escape. But he always wonders how come you don't like like him on the air, and this is the reason. It's boring. <laughs> There's no secret. There isn't a person listening to this right now who's going, "Man, keep this up. This is great. Let's find out Benji's birthday." I, I'm not asking you to. <sighs> it's just bizarre behavior. And there is a. Uh, I found out there is a, a few people. For, for some reason, the pace and the e people think that Benji is the most amazing thing on the show. Oh, they love this. That's great. Good. They're riveted. I, it's not my thing. It's just not my thing. I would like to talk to the guy. I would hang out with him. I'd have a couple of drinks with him. I'd invite him to dinner. But every time you, you take him somewhere, it's a, it's a, it's a horror scene. That, and we we okay, run where, in a... Where have you taken me somewhere that's been a horror scene? Nowhere. I don't want to go then anywhere with you. Everywhere you take me is a horror no, scene. Yeah, we, we, other people Benji. have taken you. Who's taking me okay, somewhere? Okay, I'll take you up to my party in a moo moo. <laughs> Come on, dude. You, you, you sat against the vent at scores and stared at the girls. Yeah, I mean, like a I, mental I, patient. Wait, okay, you're saying I went to a strip club and I looked at girls. No, come on. You, you were it. looking at me. You were watching everybody. You Everyone was creeped out by you. You, you stayed at my house and had night terrors at 2 in the morning, <laughs> screaming, yeah, I mean, waking Benji, up my kids. Hey, Howard, it's you, endless. Okay, wait, wait. You think the night terrors are BS? Yeah. You think it's BS? Yes. Has anyone in your family ever had night terrors? No. <laughs> That's not what you told me. No, they haven't. You never had anyone in your life. No, years. no. The only you're, you night are, you stay at my house, you scream at the top of your lungs at well, two o'clock in the morning. All right, it just happens to happen when you're at my house. And it, it happens. You know, call, call the girl I've been dating for eight months. It happens all the time. Oh, that poor girl. Yeah, we should call her just in general, see if she's okay. Fine, I'll call her. <laughs> Everything's a shtick. That's the problem. Yeah. And the the real guy. Here's a cycle, by the way. The real. Here's what'll happen. I'll get the real guy around noon today. Hmm. He'll come up and he'll talk to me and he'll go. Listen, I, I want to be better on the air. I always feel like I get into these weird situations. What do I do? And I go, Benji, Howard, ask your question. Answer, answer it. it. And then we, get, then we end up back here. Hey, Gary, how much do you make a year? It's none of your business. I would like to know, though. 
It's not that big of a deal. How much do you make a year? Well, I don't know how you so equate that's age not the with. Same as how old are you? Or even just a day. Or, or even that's a an incredible. But he's answering honestly. I'm not comfortable answering. And that. a better answer for you, Benji, would be instead of like, I don't know when I'm born. I don't understand. Would be like, you know what? I'd rather not talk about my age. And we'd say why. And then you could give us a reasonable explanation. But no, it's got to be. I'm not sure when I was born. I'm not sure they could have tinkered with it. Do you understand the difference? You just ask Gary a question. How much do you make? So Gary goes, look, Benji. Uh, I'm not going to give and, you that information. I'm not comfortable handing out information about how much money I earn. Right. That's a normal response. If I say to you, when's your birthday? Then you've got to go, uh, complicated. It's I'm not sure. Up. It's, it's not coming up. Birthday. But it was. But you wished me happy birthday. It's boring. It's it's like, who cares? It's a simple question to answer. Like, you can ask anybody in this room, when's your birthday? They'll answer it in two seconds. But you or have story. if there's a real problem, you say, listen. I don't really like to talk about my age because I don't, I I don't know what you the... guys would make a big thing about and say it's BS if I try to explain it. Explain you... what? That you don't know when your birthday is? No, I just stop it. I stop say... it. Stop. What is the birthday that they tell you you have? No, I, I don't you know want to know. Mean? I don't want to know. I don't even want to know. I want to end this. Let's see, I, you don't even want to hear the explanation. No. Now. I, I, so you got to hear There's it. no explanation. I've never, I've never heard it. That's why I'd like to right, hear Tell it. Gary the explanation because he's fascinated. Give us 30 seconds. Tell me why you're not sure when your birthday is. Look up Detlev Bronk on the internet. Right. You understand. Right, I'm sorry. I asked. Here we go. See? Who? Detlev Bronk. <laughs> What the hell? Oh, what an ass. <laughs> <laughs> and he wonders why I don't want to hang around but with even him. If, you know what? But even, even if you have a story, instead of saying, look up Det LeBronc, say, <laughs> listen, <laughs> there's a guy named Det LeBronc, blah, 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 well, blah, blah. But what does that mean, Det LeBronc? Det It's an ass. And he's, he's just... He's trying to be funny. I gotta, I'm not trying to be funny. i got to say, I agree with the pace. This is the best part. No, it's not. You know what? Because we're making it something. Yeah. He's a bore. <laughs> But, but, but this is like watching a guy bomb on stage. Like, I yeah. think that he's doing some shtick that's just not working. So it's, it's not. It's, but, and but now he's caught in the, the shtick that's, that's not great. working. that's great. That's why it's so but funny. But he'll never give it up. But he'll I have so, never give it up. I have so many fun things we could be doing. <laughs> I mean, I, I got tapes. I got, I got... Who wants to hear this? All I know is I'm going to learn how to use a computer to look up Det LeBronc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like hey, what a... Well, when's your birthday? Tell. Look up Det LeBron. Le 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 <laughs> I mean, who? seriously, Benj? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I know we're having a good time, but dude, this is exactly why I don't put you on the air. Yeah. And, you know, I don't have the time for it. Howard, it's it's your show. You know, yeah, you fine. Know. Okay, goodbye. Hey, Howard, you know what? Off. He's yeah. not adopted or anything. I guess he may be adopted. Stop. Kid. John, Stop. it's a shtick. There's no. Do he, that in the office. He wants to be something wild. I've asked the guy a million questions, and never do I get an answer that's satisfactory. Ever. He performs well on the show. He, he's a writer. He's doing a good job. He's a good kid. That's why he's sitting here. But as far as putting this microphone on and getting started in that endless Benji, I'm funny loop, I mean, I mean, it's unbelievable. John. Hey, John. Hello? Hello? It's gone. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's sweating. What is he doing now? He, he just took a sweat spotlight on He took a sweatshirt ready. off, and then his, his regular shirt came off a little bit. You saw his big... <laughs> he got naked. It was a big plan. Daughters. I will say this. You know, we all had lunch with Benji, me, Artie, the pace. Benji goes to the bathroom and walks out of the restaurant without a shirt on. Right. And he just walks in out of the rest in the restaurant with, with no shirt on. Where was this? That's normal. Uh, on you know, Fifty Seventh Street. Is it a, is a Why would you do that? And there was like kids there. And Why would you do that? This was about with no shirt four months ago, right? How, how long ago? Right? July. Right before our July break. Yeah. As a joke, I did it. For for who? Who's the joke for? Ditliff Bronk. Where's the humor? <laughs> Well, it just I thought I found it I found it fun to do. But I should have checked with Gary first, I guess. Yeah, check with Gary first. <laughs> Poor Gary, you're going to be busy. Hey, it's Benji. I'm at the diner. Can I take my shirt off? <laughs> Gary, this is Benji. I'm at the movies. I got my shoes off. <laughs> but that's the thing. There isn't a thing that he won't do stick with. That's the problem. I mean, you're out having lunch with a yeah, guy. So we're all, ha well, yeah, we're and, all and, having a great time. Yeah, like, like, I want that. Like, I'm going to go to a restaurant, and then suddenly Benji walks out with his shirt off. Yeah, and you know, you don't and understand. like, for who? He's the last hey. person you want to see without a shirt. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what is it? Especially is Benji not funny sitting at the table? Does he think that What, he what goes wrong? He's just yeah. not getting enough attention? And, well, that's what it has to be. But yeah. uh, Are you guys, like, ignoring him and... 
Is everybody else commanding? The, the, the conversation, conversation? You know, wasn't on, Ben. Oh, yeah, you're was, BSing, John. You're just trying to fit into what Howard just no, said. It, no, you remember the conversation? Yes, that it, it, it was all about the Heineken fight with me and Robin. It was. We had a whole it was discussion. The, it was, John, it was, it was right before a break. I was it leaving. Was, right I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna get out of this. Yes, Cabby. This is the most boring radio I've ever heard in my life. Me too. Benji is a psycho stalker freak. Three right. years ago at the Christmas party. Wait, wait, was, what? He was standing in the corner staring at everybody like he was going to cut him with a knife. <laughs> right. Benji, Benji, you're a freak, dude. I'm a freak? Yeah, you're a freak. I'm a freak. He wants to be a freak, though. That's the thing. Well, yeah, but, she's, but she's trying stick, hard. It's such a shtick. It's so boring. It's just boring. Answer the question. Answer a question, Benji, you tool, you freak. Why don't you answer some questions, Gabby? Give it to me. All right. You said that there was some, like, super secret, like, spy guy whose daughter you had sex with at 17 over in Iraq, right? <laughs> what? You didn't say that? All right, yeah, I gotta, I gotta get out of this. Mine. Cabby, thank you. <laughs> Wait, I want to hear about dude. that. Listen to Cabby overnight. Talk about the paper overnight. Paper. Two and six. Well, spy guy, dude, I didn't have sex in, in Iraq. You didn't have, you didn't say this on the air. No, it was some... Uh, 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 cabby, thank you. Hey, Howard? Yeah. 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., the big cabby show. Right. Less boring than Benji's scum life. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> thank you for pointing out why we don't talk to you, Benji. All right. I got to take a break. I'm just... What? I, I'll give this to you during the break, but I'm reading about Dr. Detlef Wolf Bronk. And I've learned nothing. See? Chris, you're on the air. Bro, he suckered me in, man. I got to hear about this Det LeBron. I am amazed right now. <laughs> Det LeBron. Det <laughs> yeah. A native of New York City, Bronk was born on 13th of August, 1897. <laughs> <laughs> He's a professor for medical physics at the University of Pennsylvania. So what does that got to do it's with it? If you go on, all it says is that... Um, that he did some uh, high-level government work, that the FBI investigated him favorably, and then in the 60s he did some more, like, high-level scientific work. So he was a scientific experiment. Uh, product. So what's your point? The point is Benji's 106 years old. And Benji, what is you your point? Love I'm Abraham Lincoln. What is the, what is the connection to Debt LeBronc? Can I just go with I don't want to discuss it? <laughs> so, oh, oh, you're you're so boring. You know what? He's such an ass. An ass. <laughs> He's an ass. <laughs> is that a relative of yours, Benji? Maybe. Exactly. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'll tell you next year. <laughs> On what might be my birthday. <laughs> if I right. time travel. How old are you? Look up Gustav Lang. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got to take a break. I mean, I really, I really don't know what to say. With all of this. <laughs> Ask Schmecky LeBron. How and come you don't invite me to anything? When did, when did I, when I don't I invite you because you, Howard. Howard, you, you, you oh, send me all the time. You haven't been up Why don't you include me? Why are you not included? You've said it a million times. Why am I, Why don't Wait, you want what? me sitting said, here? Why don't you want me included? I've come up to you and said, you're lying. I always not. Benji, you've been upset when you haven't been invited to stuff. Wait, but I've come up to Howard and said, Howard, why don't you invite me? Oh, just literal. We know you're upset. You make it Everyone knows you're upset while you're not invited. Now I'm telling you why. Wait. There's something wrong with you. Wait, wait. I I can't. I can't have feelings inside. That if I am offended no. if I'm not invited, no, you owe it. You ask people why you're not I, invited to Howard's function. This is the reason. Something. I've never asked. I've never. I've ever asked you why I'm not invited. Benji, you've up. asked it's me. Come up. You've asked me why is it that Howard doesn't like you on the air? I and really, we've heard about you not. Right? Why am I not invited and to the bat mitzvah? I'm not, I'm not kidding. Not the bat mitzvah. What bat yeah. mitzvah did I ask you about? Oh, no, no. He actually please. came Robin, up to me. What bat Benji, mitzvah did I ask it. you about? Stop I wouldn't invite you to any bat mitzvah. No, Robin, what bat mitzvah did I ask you about? Stop it. All right, Robin, I got. I got to get. Right, something we'll up. be back Stop right it. after these words. Yo, 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 yo! What's going on? This is LL Cool. I'm Scoresman. <laughs> Nine, two, three. You want this restaurant enhanced? Scoresman will. We'll do it. <laughs> Holy sh**, honey. A fish tank. <laughs> wow. Scores, man. You're a genius. Honey, let's stay a little longer. Hey, Scores Man, is that your utility belt? No, that's how it's Stern. I have to go pick up his laundry. <laughs> Remember, when there's a problem at Scores, you can count on Scores Man. Wow. <laughs> that's hysterical. <laughs> I can't wait for the next episode of Scores Man. Scores Man. He put a fish tank in the restaurant. He enhanced the restaurant. All right. Score is bad. That was good. Someone handed me a note that Ronnie's really pissed off today about this, about being scores man or 
I don't know what he's pissed off about. Sal, I don't know. Really? But he scores, man. I thought he'd be proud. I'm a, hey, I'm the first guy who loves scores, but Ronnie's like... He's Ro taking it to another level. Ronnie's at the point now where he his whole identity is scores. Yes. He becomes scores. Will was telling me that he was yelling that Ronnie was yelling at Will, going, "Don't f with me today. I don't want to be f with like or whatever." So he seems all pissed off today. <laughs> About being scores man. Well, well, that's what we're all assuming. <laughs> that it's the whole scores that it's man. The scores thing. thing. I'm scores man. And he's a, Lonnie made him a business card, and it says Special Scores Consultant. Right. And he has an office being built at the new West Side Scores. But that's what, what do you call Lonnie for? I mean, what, what is his function? I don't know, but he tries to act like a tough guy, and whenever I ask him that, I'll go, oh, I do things, I do things. <laughs> you know, like, like he's a tough guy. Right, because they had to fly him out to Chicago for uh, yeah. this position of his. I, uh, I consult them. I consult them. I go, what, do you, what does that entail? And he goes, don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I mean, so I'm not worried about it. I'm just curious. What yeah, does that mean? I would like to know. Oh, I go, do you, they pay you? Uh, don't worry about it. I'm scores. I'm, you know, I'm a special consultant. Is he getting paid? And I didn't think anything was weird until I found out his screen name is Scoresman923. I guess, oh, 923. Oh, that's I our, didn't even realize that, yeah. That's our frequency here in New York. Scoresman 92.3. <laughs> I, I picked up on that right away. <laughs> oh, I, did, I didn't get that. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm sitting there thinking that there are 922 other scores. Oh, no, no. I was thinking it was his birthday or something. <laughs> like 923. Yeah, like September 23rd or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I know he hasn't come in here. He's all wrapped up in his scores thing. I guess. He's too I mean, into when it. will he be in scores this week? When can I contact him? Well, we're going over there later this week because Ronnie's birthday party is happening. Yeah, but I meant in his office. Oh, that's that's being built on the west side. <laughs> oh, that's right. He doesn't have an office at the... His office isn't yeah. ready yet. Oh. Check it scores out. man. Wow. Would you want your screen like your screen name supposed to reflect who you are? Right. Even Jack Welch never called himself GE Man. And where's he get ninety two three? I mean, where, where, I mean, why does he take that? That's not his number. He's way into it. He's into the radio station, into scores. Wherever he is, he becomes that place. Yeah. Scores man. <laughs> he loves scores. <laughs> when I met him, he loved Playboy. But. Right, but he couldn't get to Hugh Hefner. Right. He can get he got to, to me. Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> He's J. Edgar Poontang. <laughs> <laughs> this scores, man. But it's he's dressed as Ronnie man. the limo driver. And his alter ego. Hey, scores, man. How Wild you doing? Wild man or man or You having a good time? Yeah. Good. What, why are you acting like a tough guy? I'm not acting like a tough guy. What so is wrong with you, man? About why are you sensitive? I'm not sensitive Your scores, man. I can Let's care talk. Less. It doesn't bother me. You're a special oh, consultant. What does that mean? Don't worry about it. Means it means whatever I wanted. Whatever I wanted to mean. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I go, what's a special consultant? Hey, it means whatever I want it to mean. That's right. But really, what is it? Just what I said. Whatever See, I want. He acts to like mean. a tough guy. Yeah, I'm a tough guy. I want to be John Gotti. You're a tough guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, come on. You're answering I, I like wanna a tough be, guy. I want to be John Somebody Gotti. To me, okay, please. I'm a radio. Let me be John Gotti. I'm a radio guy. So he says to me, "What does that entail?" I go, "Well, I get on the microphone, I tell some jokes, I, or I, I talk about the current events, or I sex, or take phone calls." So I, what is what a score do? special consult? Just what I told you yesterday. Anybody has problems, they want to change things, they want, you know, they can call me, and I can take care of it for them. There's problems at school. But why do they need you to do that? Like, why? Isn't they, that need Lonnie's some, job? they need somebody to do it. No, Lonnie handles PR and everything. That's do you not want me to discuss that you're no, scores I man? No, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Are you me. scores man 92.3? Yeah. Because of 92.3, the frequency? That's what I picked, okay? Yeah, all right. Is that all right? <laughs> what do you got to do with that? Nothing. <laughs> What's wrong with that? What's the big deal? Wow. It's just be, you're becoming, it's becoming your whole life. So, in yeah. other words, yeah. if it is my uh, whole life, somebody okay. has a complaint about scores, they call Ronnie. That's right. Yeah. Let's see if there's any calls for scores, man. Oh, great. Can't wait. Brian, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Howard? Howard, I, I'm usually a very smart man, but 
I think it's a code. Nine to three means nine p.m. to three a.m. The time that Ronnie's there. Right. These guys. Got, he's got to figure it out. <laughs> oh, it's not ninety two. It's about right too. It's about right. Thanks a lot, Howard. Have a All good right, day. Thank you. Hi, you're on with Scores, man. Oh, scores, man. I need help. I'm a bachelor party. I mean, uh, I'm a best man for a bachelor party. Okay. And, and I don't know where to have it. And and I'm I'm at a loss. Can you help me, scores, yeah, man? Yeah, sure, please? no problem, man. Give me a call. I'll where should he have party. the bachelor party? At scores. Where else? There you go. I'll set oh, it up. Front. Thank you, scores, man. Yeah. Hey, ninety-two point <laughs> three. Is that your IQ or what? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> huh? That's it. Hey, shout out to Perry down at Barnett Tool. Thanks, guys. There Bye. you go. All right. Yeah, Barnett Perry. <laughs> Well, hey, Scoresman just helps some people. There you go. He's right away. He knows exactly what to do. Hey, Bob, you're on with Scoresman. Hey, I want to ask uh, Vito Colihomo if he can catch my white hot bullet with heat. <laughs> Vito Colihomo. <laughs> All right, let's go to Mike. Mike, you're on with Scoresman. I, I know what Ronnie's going to do. It's a real stretch from the job he's doing now. He's going to give him a wand. He's going to people for uh, guns and stuff. Then he's going to sit in the, in the hallway. Yeah, in a plastic chair. Yeah, just like right. you do now. Right. Different place, that's Jealous, all. Jealous, right, man? Right, scores, man. Wish it was you, right? What's that? Wishes were you, right? You wish it was you. I don't wish I was you, Ronnie. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would, baby, but not you. Yeah, do you okay. think people are jealous of Scores, man? Really? Yeah. Wouldn't you like to have his yeah. superpowers? Ronnie, don't you know everybody's coming to Scores now, and we're going to be calling you Scores, man, forever? Just That's... like Baba Booey? Yeah, I, I already, What do you think of... I already um... found that out, believe me. Scores, <laughs> man, can change tens into singles. Yeah. No, 20s. No, Scores, man, <laughs> can put a fish tank in a restaurant. Yeah, I was going to say, what the hell are singles going to do for you? Yeah, what's singles going to do? Well, that was <laughs> one of the things you, you, told Ron, uh, you told Lonnie to put a, a fish tank in the new Scores, right? No, that wasn't my idea. Yeah, no. Somebody suggested it. I said that wasn't my idea. So did you pass that on to Lonnie? Lonnie was here yesterday. He heard the idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are we going to get a fish tank? Maybe. Because <laughs> it Ronnie, wasn't my idea. Lonnie liked the idea of a oh, fish tank God. in the restaurant so you could look at fish while you eat Dude, fish. That was not my idea. <laughs> fish tank takes up space. It was, you want, it was not my idea. Yeah, Somebody you suggested were gonna, it. You to were going to bring it to Lonnie. I was going to suggest it to him. That's the whole idea. What about having mermaids in the fish tank? Good idea. <laughs> can I can I say instead? Well, of... they are going to have mermaids in the restaurant. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. How about oh, that? Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Whose idea was that? Yours? No. So what is Scoresman's ideas? What are what are your ideas? I'm working on it. Really? Yeah. What about like a rodeo ring with some cattle in it while you eat your steak? <laughs> no, we we uh, we changed some things with the restaurant the other day. What'd you change? You did. About adding a wall and stuff, separating it from the club and stuff like that. Was that your idea? Yeah. Yeah. Scores me. Yeah. Why do you want a wall separating the restaurant from because the club? Because it's, it's supposed to be a classy restaurant, and if you want to eat in private and not look at the stage area, then you have a nice wall put up. That was your idea. Wow. Great idea. Is that where the fish are going to go? <laughs> yeah, that, that's where the fish well, now I can, look fish instead. Now I can see why they need you there. <laughs> You're going to put down any rugs or linoleum? or Yeah, linoleum. <laughs> I like linoleum. Linoleum's good, man. What type of fish do you want to see? Saltwater. Saltwater fish? Yeah. Yeah. Very colorful. But about, that was it? not my idea. All right? Eric, your, your <laughs> idea, your, your idea was the wall. The wall. All right. Right. He was going to relay the fish tank idea. But any chance right. you could bang your head into that wall when you Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> How about a fireplace? I, maybe a fireplace. Fireplace would be nice. Eric, go ahead. You're on with Scores, man. Yeah, I got a problem, Scores, man. Go ahead, man. The um, last time I had my drink, there was a pubic in it. Uh, maybe they could wear hand nets down there. Maybe they could that. All right, we'll take care of that for you, man. Yeah, Jeff the Drunk. Go ahead. You're on with Scores, man. Yeah, Scores, man. Why don't you use your super powers and fly your ass out of there? What's that? <laughs> wants you to fly your ass. He hates you. I know. I hate him, too. Really? So it's okay. Why don't you add a wall to your Why don't you change your underwear? It's all bloody. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Jeff the Drunk. All right, Scores Man. Thank you, man. All right. There he goes. Scores Man. Scores Man 92.3. <laughs> Prone man. Thank He's, goodness he just blew out of here. He loves that Scores. <laughs> you can email my husband at scoresman. <laughs> scoresman 923. Scoresman 923. <laughs> That's my husband. And remember, Scoresman's 
kryptonite is his wife. Yeah, because she because Bonnie doesn't let Ronnie go down the scores. <laughs> no, his arch enemy is Chauncey Hayden. Yes, that's his nemesis. Hmm. And Bonnie, his wife, because she doesn't like it when he becomes scores man. <laughs> <laughs> well, she drains his powers. Yeah. Ronnie, I don't want you going to scores. We uh, have a, a dinner party to go to. God damn it. I'm scores man. <laughs> I can't be scores man tonight. Honey, this restaurant is so nice. The food is wonderful. The people are wonderful. I just wish... I just wish there was just something a little bit more to enhance this place. Holy sh**. Who the f*** are you? I'm Scoresman. Nine, two, three. <laughs> you want this restaurant enhanced? Scoresman will do it. Holy sh**, honey. A fish tank. Wow. Scoresman, you're a genius. Honey, let's stay a little longer. Wow, Scoresman saved the day. See, and people stay longer. <laughs> Scoresman. <laughs> I had no idea his screen name was Scoresman923. No, I, you've never emailed him. Right? He's gone. He's flipped his lid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Scoresman. Scoresman? Scoresman. <laughs> Next week, Scoresman fights glitter. That's right. Nasty glitter that gets all over your clothing. And heavy perfume. And heavy perfume and 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 body makeup. <laughs> it gets all over your pants when you get a lap dance. He fights other strip club guys. <laughs> Flash dancers, man. <laughs> Score man. Formerly known as Limo Man, he's now Scores Man. Scores Man. We gotta get him a cape. <laughs> Yeah, when Ronnie walks in from now on, he should have a cape with <laughs> <laughs> a big S on it. The scores. He loves scores, man. Hey, I don't blame him. It's a great place. I just want to make my screen name Scores Man. You try to keep it on the DL. I try to be a little cool. I told him, you know, it might not be cool if everything in your life is scores. Yeah. Maybe a couple of things shouldn't be scores. You know, maybe just hang out there. Yeah. Not take the name. <laughs> he gets confused sometimes. He goes, I'm a drive... I mean, I'm scores man. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like a guy who married somebody. He's taking scores name. Yeah. Oh, he loves scores. I'm telling you. <laughs> he gets angry when he you know, hears stuff going on down there and he's not there. Oh. He'd be at scores every night, but he's married. I know. That's because he's got kryptonite. Bonnie. <laughs> Bonnie. <laughs> It's our enemy. <laughs> Lonnie, Bonnie, and Ronnie. <laughs> yeah. The adventure of Lonnie, Bonnie, and Ronnie. Bonnie, torn between Lonnie and Bonnie. I love Lonnie, and I love Bonnie. <laughs> and I'm Ronnie. <laughs> Which way do I go? Scores, man. Well, Baba Booey... As a college student shadowing him for the day. You know, this is really weird. Ga Gary got a letter from this guy. He says, hey, I'm in college. It would really help me out if I could follow you around for the day and learn what a producer does. Yeah. Oh. So Gary says, okay. So, uh, hey, how you doing, man? What college you go to? Hofstra. Hofstra. That's right. So everyone's saying, in the, everyone's saying you're a big wise ass. <laughs> like you're totally busting Gary's balls. Um. Well, I guess I am a little bit. Yeah. Now, someone said you were turned down for an internship here. Is that right? Yeah, I was. It means, that means you yeah. have to be Charles Manson. Yeah, I mean, nobody <laughs> gets turned down for an internship no. here. I thought I did pretty well, too. I don't know what the You must have been a little wise-assy in the interview, because that's the one thing that gets you turned down. I, I'm trying to have Amory go through the notes to see if she kept notes on why she turned you down, but it's hard to get turned down here. Yeah, I mean, we, we, this we're is a, desperate. We're desperate for anybody to work for a year. You know, see, I, I was a little, I, I was surprised that it happened because, I mean, I figured someone like myself, you know, into music and stuff like that, big into the radio station, big fan of you, too. You thank know. you. I've been listening to you for years, years so. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of weird. I mean, imagine if you're getting turned down for free jobs. Imagine when you go for one for money. <laughs> do, do you have a plan for the future? Do you know what you want to do? Um, uh, Originally, it was like 
it was this, you know. I was really into, like, morning radio. And okay. I've gotten really into, like, writing and stuff, too. But, I mean, it's uncertain. Communication, my major in school, you know. So All right. It's very broad, very vague. All right. Your name is Josh? Yeah. But everyone much. calls him Rudy. Rudy's my name. Why? Because of the movie Rudy? Basically. Because you're a tiny guy? Yeah, well, I mean, I was seventh grade. I was playing football. I was, like, 4'11". So the coach was like, eh, you know, we'll call you Rudy. And just yeah, stuff great. like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, it could be Frodo. So. <laughs> so are you interested in some of the things? Good. Now they'll call him that, Frodo. <laughs> How tall a guy are you? I'm 5'5". Five 5'5". Five. Five five. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're 5'3". Yeah, right. So to hear some of the things that I've heard that he said, because he, he's been pretty cool with me so far. Although he was an hour and a half late. Late, yeah, now, what's that? Yeah. I mean, why an hour and a half late? You, you got a break? You're going to follow Baba Boo? No, I know. Yeah, I was, I, I'm a big ass for not being in here early enough, but uh, I had to work last night, and like the Yankees were on when I got home, so I had to watch the end of the game. <laughs> I see. And then, like, it's like, I hear you. go very oh, far. A lot exactly. of things going on. Yeah, and that is a like, lot of things. Could like, you imagine, though, when I was in college, if I got a shot if following this was some my guy love, around? Yeah. yeah, if this was it. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd be here on time. I, I had a, you know, the game go, game was on, so I was like, yeah, no employer, I drank a beer, no, no employer I, wants to hear that you're watching the game. And that's why <laughs> did the Yankees didn't. stop to watch you? No. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> well, there was anyway, a game. It was a lost, it was a lost cause. You would actually fit in here very well. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It know? was a game. So he got here at like 7:30, and he missed a lot of the stuff I do in the morning, you know, to get right, which is really what you do. Which is really mm -hmm. what I do. So then. Uh, when I when he got here, my breakfast was there, and uh, he goes, "Oh, I gotta watch you eat breakfast." And I was like, "No, no, you can wait for that." <laughs> the first comment was, "Oh, great, I gotta watch you eat breakfast." Yeah, so then I heard that while I was in here, he said, um, uh, "The e guy asked him, what 'What'd you learn so far?'" He goes, "So far, I learned how to eat breakfast and open the mail and open a door." <laughs> <laughs> Boy, thanks for this opportunity. <laughs> well, what is this? You're writing a paper? Yeah, kind of. It's like a uh, for my film class. I had an assignment, a professional media assessment. Right. So, like, uh... You're assessing Gary? Well, I wanted to assess... I, originally, I thought it was Gary and Howard. Right. You know, so now I learned that it's just Gary. Yeah. And, uh, You're not going to be anywhere near me. Exactly. How, how did it... As far as I get. Right. Get so confused. I don't know. And, and you know what the other weird thing is, is that uh, I guess nobody in his life has ever liked you, because he tried to do this in high school, right. and the school wouldn't let him anywhere near the station. High schools won't let you. And then he tried to do... Even in college, even when he said he wanted to intern here... They told him that, you know, well, the Howard Stern show, that's not um, a, a mass media show. That's not yeah. They said that in well, college? Yeah, yeah they, my, I went to uh, the person who does the internships at Hofstra, and I mean, I, I told him that I came here and spoke to someone. He gave me a hard time saying that, like, uh, you know, the Howard Stern, that's not mass media, that's not journalism. And I was like, well, you know, <laughs> this is a radio show that goes out to the entire nation. Yeah. Listen more. I'm like, and you have, you know, at least an hour worth, or 45 minutes worth of news going on every day. Like, but what an elitist. I mean, it's you like, know? hey, dude. Have we had a Hofstra, a Hofstra intern before? Yeah, I think we've had a couple. No. I think. Well, in high school, it's not that they don't like me. They're not gonna. Right. They're not gonna have me. They're not. Why do you say they don't like me? In well, high he said, school? Because he said they told them that they didn't like you and they didn't want him over here. Yeah, but they don't want anyone associated with a controversial show in high school with these naked had, women and stuff. We've had high school kids up here before. Yeah, well, that, that, that's but crazy. I even had, I, Howard. I had a 16 year old intern when we were at NBC. Yeah, but how'd that happen? You had that high school kid here. Well, he, he applied for an internship, and we hired him. His advisor even came in. Really? Yeah. Well, that's very rare. Not a high school allows a kid to come down here. They were very enthused when I found out when I was in high school and I was going to come here, and it was it was going really well until like a couple of days before, and just, yeah. you know, things didn't work out. Well, I don't know. You must have some kind of personality problem if you didn't get an <laughs> internship here, dude. I don't know what the deal is. She hates me, I guess. Yeah. I'm you must person. have come off real bad. I was extremely nice. I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm a very nice person. I don't know. Hmm. We, we, you seem fine to me, but everyone's saying back there you're being a real wise ass to I, Baba Booey. I guess. I haven't seen much. I've seen a little he's bit of it. He's been in here the whole time. You know? Yeah, I think he's annoyed by that, too. Right. <laughs> that I've been in here when he's out there. Right. Well, he is supposed to I'm shadow supposed you. I'm supposed to be shadowing. I need to be watching. You should get Emery in here someday and, and just have her tell the stories of interns that we've turned down. I know uh, just recently... We had a kid who, while she was interviewing him, he put his feet up on her desk. Oh. Really? Yeah, just like lean back in his chair. And, wow. You know, wow. <laughs> that kid sounds like a go-getter. <laughs> sounds like a future president yeah. of a corporation. But some kids say really inappropriate things in the interview. I kid you know, I always thought it was weird in college. He used to sit us down and, like, train us how to, you know, get a job. And, like, they'd say, well, you know, like, don't put your feet up on the person. Right. And go, what do they think, we're retarded? But I guess like, apparently we are. Yeah. You, you would be amazed when we do the intern um, orientation. I just asked for a show of hands. How many people here have ever answered a phone at a business? And it's usually around half or less. So then you got to train people how to answer phone because a lot of people don't know how to answer the phone. They don't know how to say hello? No, usually. Like, well, how many people have answered a phone? But it's usually like, hey, or yo, you know, what's up? Yeah. So they, would say, they, they wouldn't think to say, hey, hello, Howard Stern oh, show? No. 
I wouldn't think that. You'd be, you'd be surprised, Howard. Wow. I'd be pretty good at that. <laughs> you could do that, right? Exactly, man. I work in a business when I'm, you know, home, not at school, so. I remember my internship. I, I heard a ringing sound. I go, what is that? And the guy goes, that's a telephone. <laughs> and I go, oh, okay. <laughs> I get it now. I had, an, right. I had an intern that was reading a book during the show, just like reading a book. Right. So I said, I said, you know, you can't read during the show. And she goes, what? There's nothing going on anyway. <laughs> and I said, close the book now. And she slammed it shut. She glared at me. Really? She glared at me. Like with, I was, the, with those teeth? Yeah, like I was, like like I was evil. <laughs> nothing takes me from the great Gatsby, Harry. <laughs> really annoyed that I was interrupting her reading. But why, why couldn't she read a book? Because what, was she, what was she supposed to be doing? <laughs> Answering the phones. Oh, but, but if the phone's not ringing, what's to do? There's stuff to do. Oh, yeah? Always stuff to okay. do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like first, perfectly reasonable to me. There's if, nothing going on. If you walked out there, you'd be annoyed. All right. Yeah, well. she could learn how to eat breakfast and just close a door. <laughs> I'll well, try to do better. Uh, welcome to our show for the day. Thank you. And I hope you learned something from Gary. And in all Gary. fairness, you did miss an hour and a half. A key hour and a half. Yeah, a key hour and a half where Gary really comes to life. <laughs> yeah, it's important stuff. <laughs> important yeah, stuff. First, first hour and a half. Joshua. Have you learned anything so far? Um, I've learned that, uh... A lot of people uh, seem to have dislike for uh, certain people back there. I don't know. Oh, yeah? The oh, really? Yeah. What'd you I say? Mean, uh, I don't know. There seems to be a lot. There's camaraderie between the interns and John. John seems to be uh, loved by a lot of people. And, uh, and a lot of people seem to have this very tough esteem towards uh, Ronnie and whatnot out there. They don't like Ronnie. Don't like yeah. Ronnie. Ronnie, yeah. yeah. Scores man, you mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, scores man. They, scores uh, man 923. Exactly. So. Yeah. Who doesn't like Ronnie? Uh, I don't think it's the fact that they don't like him. I think there's just a little bit of a... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> they seemed a little agitated by his presence almost, you know, like a, yeah. He was like an F.U. Yeah, kind of. Wow. Wow. Man, you, <laughs> this is going to be some paper you write. Send me oh, a copy. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is big so far. Mm -hmm. But have I tried to explain everything to you as I go along? Am I doing the best I can? Yeah, I mean, Gary's doing a a fairly good job of explaining his... Uh, All I know is <laughs> Gary has a way of opening himself up and helping people, and they end up screwing him. Right, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. <laughs> you know what I mean? No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. All right, very good. That's uh, very nice to meet you. Good luck. Keep right, following. That is Gary Shadow. Josh. Josh. That's right. All right, Josh. You're a lucky man. Chào các mọi người. Và đây bên em về một chiếc xe Honda Brio sản xuất 2020 bản 1.2 số tự động. 
chiếc xe phiên bản màu trắng rất là mới đấy và rất tiếc em nó là đã qua mùa lũ rồi vì vậy giá cả rất là phải chăng chuyên 300 triệu cho một chiếc xe đời 2020 bản RS Bio RS và trước khi báo giá thì em sẽ quay tổng thể chiếc xe cho mọi người cùng xem xe phiên bản màu trắng rất